what's bothering you? You know, what is it that's bothering you? Is it a thought from the past that is processing and processing and processing? Um, is something you're dealing with right now? Is it something that's coming up that you're processing and it's bothering and badgering you? Well, good morning. I'm Jeffrey Paul with your morning inspiration. We're going to talk about what's bothering you and how to get to the root of it today. And then what do you do when you get to the root? You know, it's like finding a weed in your yard. If you find a weed, what do you do then? You just break the top off? Well, my wife, who is a master gardener, would cut your head off because, you know, you don't just whack a weed's top off because it actually sends the roots on deeper while it doesn't appear. And then when it comes up, it's like twice the reed that it was there. And thoughts and feelings and emotions are truly, are really truly um, weeds, he weeds in the garden of God. And it's been sown, seeds have been sowed to produce those weeds by John 10.10, 10, which represents the devil's full-time job, his full-time purpose, his mission statement of his remaining time until he's out of here. The reality, though, is we have to deal with those weeds. We have to deal with those seeds that are being planted every day. And those seeds that have been planted in the past, those seeds that are a perspective of the future, and the seeds of the situations right now. That's why I asked you the three questions. What's bothering you? And to take the time to examine your thoughts is more important than exercise, nutrition, sleep, and anything else. And I usually am really advocate for those three elements of healthy living. But the truth is, if you're not examining the thoughts that are putting you into prison, blinding you, deafening you, you know, just creating a, a imprisonment of your life, then you just remain to be a prisoner. But wait a minute, in Luke 4, Verses 18 and 19, Jesus gets up, opens the scroll, and reads his mission statement that came out of Isaiah 61. I have come to set the captives free, to give sight to the blind, hearing to the deaf. Now, if that's his mission statement, and it was because he sat down and says, now you have heard my mission statement. You know why I'm here. I come to redeem my people from Adam and Eve through Jeffrey Paul and everybody beyond that point. I'm here to redeem. I'm here to take back. But he doesn't do it just once. The history and character of God, if you study the Old Testament, he continued to take the Israelites after they messed up and messed up and got back in the prison, they got freed, then got back into slavery and they got freed. He's a loving God. He's never going to change his mission statement. He's going to redeem us right to the end of time so that we are truly set free. But redemption is a necessity every single thought sometimes, every single day. So what are you? A prisoner to your thoughts or more than a conqueror of your thoughts? You see, it's not about your strength and your power. It's not about positive mental attitude. You've heard me say that a number of times if you've come here and join me in the morning. But the truth of it is, the truth is the relationship of knowing how to take captive those thoughts, how to take captive those thoughts. In fact, I'm going to give you the scripture right below me, right there in the, in the screen. Take captive those thoughts out of 2 Corinthians 3. I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 6. Take captive. You have been given the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, Paul said to Timothy when he was feeling captivated by his timidity, Paul said to him in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6 and 7, Timothy, you do not have a spirit of timidity. You have a spirit of power and of love, and of sound mind, and of discipline. Fan it into flame, he said. Well, what was he saying to Timothy? What? Wait a minute. Forget about Timothy. What is he saying to us? What's the word of God saying to us in that very verse? That we need to come to the consciousness that greater is he that is in you and me. 
is greater than any thought, any feeling, any emotion, any circumstance that is taking place in our lives. And we have to face that with the with the tools, with the weapons that Christ has given to us. Read that scripture today. I don't care if you can recite it in, in your memory. Read it. Allow a new, fresh awakening come within you out of 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 6, that represents to take captive the thoughts, but you got to know what's bothering you. What, what seed is the devil planting from your past, your future, or your present, or your make-believe world that he creates through all his lies? What is it? And then when you zero in, it's almost like you got a, a rifle with a scope on it. And when you zero in, man, you put them in the crossbars and you pull the trigger. And now the one that is being taken captive, that was you, becomes the one that takes captive the thoughts. Just like when Peter was in prison behind bar cells. What's Jesus do for him? What does God do for him? He opens the gates. He opens the cell bars. And that then falling on his face is the guard, the one that kept him in prison. That's the reversal. That's the transformation. That's the change of mind that brings us to the awareness of the power that's living and active inside of us through the Holy Spirit, through the power of God that lives within us. But see, what happens is these thoughts begin to cover over the acknowledgement, the knowledge, the awareness of the power of God within us is it reduces power by no means you're not going to reduce God's power but what does it do it covers and blinds us oh, oh, oh let's go back to Isaiah 61 I have come to set the captive free to give sight to the blind hearing to the deaf how many times seven times 70 or as many times as you need to be set free that's what the Redeemer Jesus Christ came and is always doing in our life one example out of the Old Testament, Hosea. Hosea was a major prophet. And God has him buy a prostitute to take into his household, become his wife, and have his children. He cleans her up, straightens her up, puts beautiful clothes on her, takes care of her, puts her in a palace, and she's living a good life. <laughs> But a while goes by and kids are growing up and she wants to get back into the old games of life. So she goes back into prostitution all over again. Well, Hosea was devastated, obviously. He did what God said to do. God performed a beautiful miracle to give him a wife and children. But then that woman went back into her old way of life. What did God tell as an example? to express the character of God to Hosea that we will learn right now today. What did he tell him? Go redeem her again. She's on the slave you know, bench where they're, they're auctioning off slaves again. And this prostitute now has been used up, is older, and is, is just you know, undesirable. And Hosea obeys God. And what happens? Takes her in to give us an example today that God will never stop redeeming us no matter what we've done, what we haven't done, or where we're at in life. One last example, Abraham, friend of God, who started this whole issue of blessings and redemptions and things with his son, Isaac. Took him up, did what God said, laid him down. And for 18 years of having the very precious thing that he wanted, now he's over 100 plus years, and he had this young man who he couldn't have a child for all those years. God said it. God delivered it. God gave him. And now he's put him on the altar to kill him. What does God do? He redeems him from that death by finding a ram to be replaced, like he put the replacement of Jesus for our sins and our, our ways on the cross. Well, don't let your salvation blind you of everyday salvation. Don't let your deafness to the word of God being something of the past not be as present and living and active as today. What's bothering you? Face it. Fear? Face it. Anxiety? Face it. Doubt? Worry? You know, what mom said, what dad said, 
face it, take it captive by the power of the Holy Spirit, and then be set free to go help others be told and alerted to they can be set free the same way. Have a beautiful, beautiful weekend. I look forward to your thoughts. I'll be looking for your comments and I will be commenting back to you and look forward to absolutely a wonderful new week. And throughout this week, uh, weekend, watch for me on a live quickie. Uh, I'll be sharing with you a brand new kind of platform that we're releasing. Uh, and we're really excited about it because we want you to have inspiration, not just in the morning, inspiration everywhere you go whatever appliance that you're on, whatever uh, phone you're on, whatever computer you're on, wherever you're at, podcast, YouTube, Instagram. So get ready for that announcement. My team has been working diligently to get it prepared so they can bless you, to set you free more, and to remind you God loves you and he is absolutely in your corner and he'll never, ever leave you or forsake you. See you next week.